Our motherboard is the foundation of our computer and our chipset is the foundation of the motherboard. Today we're going to be answering a subscriber question. We're going to read the comment and we're going to look at and evaluate the specs, but we have to understand the problem before we can come up with a solution. And as we look at the specs of the motherboard, we're also going to need to outline, review, and define uh, what we're looking at for PCI Express resources. Because as this goes down through the hierarchical structure, uh, from what workstations to a high-end desktop, which is now kind of gone flat, more about that in another video, and in the desktop, which is where we're at with these resources, uh, this is actually a two-part question. And what we have to determine by looking at the CPU and the chipset are where we stand with PCI Express lanes. Let's read the comment. This comment is on our video about the Gigabyte Aorus Generation 4 add-in card adapter comparison and simple install tutorial on the TRX40 Designare, which is by Gigabyte. And this comment is from Gabriel Humberto Arias. Hello. I can install this PCIe adapter on my Crosshair Formula 7 Hero Wi-Fi using the first slot for GeForce 1080. I think it has X470 chipset. What is your opinion? My first question was we need to verify the motherboard. And then, of course, uh, once we had that listed, which is to reiterate the X470 chipset, then Gabrielle came back and, yes, confirmed that model. And then we said we're working on the video, which is what this is about. And then I needed to know about the CPU, and he confirmed he's using a Ryzen 7 2700X CPU. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the motherboard specs on ASUS's website. Then I'm going to take a look at PC Part Picker because it allows me to go down and pick out the motherboard brand, the chipset. Then I can look at the model and I can verify some basic specs because I'm looking at some information in several places that confirms what I'm looking at. So as I build on that information and that knowledge, I know that what I'm looking at has some uh, consistency and continuity. And this motherboard tech specs, looking at the CPU, the chipset, the two things we're going to focus on are going to be expansion slots and storage. And for expansion slots, we have two PCI Express 3.0 slash 2.0 by 16 slots. That's by 16 one slot, mechanically and electrically, or dual by 8 electrically. And we'll come back and reinforce that in a few minutes. And then through the chipset, we have one PCI Express 2.0 by 16 slot. That's mechanically. Electrically, it runs it by 4. And then we have two PCI Express 2.0 by one slots. Then for storage, it looks like we have one M.2 NVMe drive. And it looks like there's probably one M.2 NVMe drive through the chipset. Now let's go to PC Part Picker System Builder. We're going to choose a motherboard. First based on the brand. Second based on the chipset. And this gets us to six compatible products. And the one we want is the Asus ROG Crosshair 7 Hero Wi-Fi. And we can see that takes 64 gigs. Other information we'll share in the specs as we get to that will probably confirm at 128 gigs. It depends on the CPU that's used, and that's why we need to verify those PCI Express resources for the CPU and the same for the chipset. So we'll add that. Now we need to choose a CPU. I always like to look at CPUs based on core count, but in this case, we're looking at the Ryzen 7 2700, so that's eight cores. And he has the 2700X. Both have the same core count. However, the X takes a little more power and runs a little faster. So we're going to add that to the list. Okay, so those are our two main components. I'm going to go back over to ASUS. Let's take a look at support. We're going to take a look at the manual. We've got a configuration guide, a user's manual, and a motherboard installation guide. All we need is the user manual. Now before we download the manual, I'm going to go to AMD. We're going to take a look at the Ryzen 7 2700X. I want to check the specifications. Core count, thread count, and I've got PCI Express 3.0 by 16. We're running dual channel, 2933, but I don't know the most important thing I need. And a quick search on Wikipedia will bring us to the 2700. And right here we are, 2700X, and here we are on our lanes, 24. That's 20 plus 4. As a reminder how that works out with uh, 24 lanes, think of four lanes that are already used up because we have the interconnect that connects the chipset to the CPU. So anything that goes through the chipset with all of those lanes goes through those four lanes to connect to the CPU. So we have 20 lanes left to work with. So then the question becomes how do we uh, allocate 20 PCI Express lanes to the CPU? Good question. 
Okay, how many lanes does it take for the GPU? Normally 16. So with those 16 lanes, we've got to figure out how we're going to sort that out. And the other part of the question is about the quad card. I'll get that out. We'll take a look at it. So then the other four lanes that we haven't referenced yet that are sitting there for us are for the primary M.2 NVMe drive. Could be uh, M.2 underscore 1. We'll get to that. Let's go now and check and see what we've got for the chipset and see how that works. So again, we'll go back to AMD. Specifications for the chipset. And we're going to scroll down here to the X470. And to reiterate, that's PCI Express 3. And on the chart, we're looking for the PCI Express lanes totally usable. A total of 40, 32. So we have 32 lanes. And they're PCI Express 3. And it shows the configuration 1 by 16, 2 by 8, 1 by 4. So now we need to download the manual. I'm going to go to page 3. Now that we know the comment, the chipset, the CPU, we're getting ready to check the motherboard, see how that's laid out. So the next thing we're looking for while we're in that manual is what's number one. Of the six things I'm looking for in the manual, I like a chipset block diagram to tell me how things are laid out, like in this machine. And we reference this machine, which is the Gigabyte TRX40 Designare, where even though I have four 16-lane slots mechanically, electrically I have two 16-lane slots, and electrically I have two 8-lane slots. And in one of those 8-lane slots, I'm using a PCI Express 3.0 Thunderbolt 3 add-in card that uses four lanes. Those are dedicated resources on those slots. Even though the TRX40 is very easy to understand and well laid out, we've still got to define the specs for the quad card because it's the same for any platform. So we're going to take a look, since we don't have the uh, block diagram, we're going to take a look at the specifications. I want to take a look at the motherboard layout, the expansion slots, because that gets a little strange, especially in this board. A lot of times, um, some of these manuals are easier to read than others. To me, even though I know what I'm looking for, this one I think is a little bit more complicated. It's not as easy to understand, although he has a good handle on what he's trying to do. Two other things we've got to look for that are critical in how this all works, because what we're looking for are CPU lanes that we can bifurcate. And I'll, I'll get to those specs for the card in a minute. But once we get through those specs for the bifurcation, uh, and we're trying to figure out what's available on this motherboard, we need to look at the uh, operating mode. Terminology in each manual can be a little bit different, uh, but the second thing we want to find out is bandwidth configuration, because that's really where this is all at. And this manual has it in the reverse of what it should be, but you'll understand once we look at it. So the first thing we'll do is go to contents. Let's go to specifications. From the top down, we know the CPU, we know the chipset, and in the specs here it verifies 4 DIMMs, 64 gigs. If we go back to ASUS, and look at the tech specs. The tech specs now on the RAM show that this will support, depending on the CPU you are using, 128 gigs of RAM. So remember, what we're trying to do is identify information where we have consistency. And if there's any discrepancies, understand what the discrepancy is and how that plays out, how that relates. For this processor, I think we're still at 64 gigs. I think that's a pretty solid. But this motherboard is capable of 128 gigs based on the CPU. And I reference that since we talk about a purpose-built computer for content creation, for rendering. So the th two things we want to focus on, expansion slots and storage. So in the manual, to reiterate, two PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slots, supports by 16 for a single slot, by 8 by 8 which is electrically an 8 lane slot and an 8 lane slot and then by 8 and by 4 with an asterisk and the asterisk is the gotcha we'll get to that and for the third slot which is through the chipset is PCI Express 2.0 by 16 mechanically but electrically it's by 4 and then to reiterate two PCI Express 2.0 by 1 slots okay here's the gotcha the PCI Express underscore by 8 slash by 4 underscore 2 slot shares bandwidth with M.2 underscore 2 that's going to be a problem. PCI Express underscore by 8 slash by 4 underscore 2. That slot will run in by 4 mode if M.2 underscore 2 is enabled in PCI Express mode. Well, that's not ideal, but that's kind of one stumbling block. But we got some more information we still to verify. Two more places we're going to check. Okay, for the motherboard layout on page 18, we have three slots. Number one, PCI Express by 16 slash by 8 underscore 1. Number two, PCI Express by 8 slash by 4 underscore 2. And then number three, 
PCI Express by four underscore three. To reiterate, the first two slots to the CPU and the third slot through the chipset. We have an M.2 underscore one down here on the lower part. And then oddly enough, M.2 underscore two is up here on top. Okay, I'm gonna skip over to page 23 and let's take a look at expansion slots. And it's not the physical slots that I wanna look at, but I wanna scroll on down for slot description. Uh, this is a little bit more, uh, a little more helpful. PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slash by eight underscore one. And then number two is about one slot. Number three, PCI Express 3.0 by eight slash by four underscore two. And then number four, about one slot, but number two. And then number five, which is a PCI Express 2.0 by four underscore three. So to reiterate, this first slot is a 16 lane slot by itself mechanically and electrically. However, when these two slots that are to the CPU are used simultaneously, they each become by eight. But the caveat is if you're using M.2 underscore two, which is there at the top, then that configuration changes to a by four. And remember, this is PCI Express operating mode. We're on page 24. So in the first slot, PCI Express by 16 slash by eight underscore one is a by 16 slot used by itself, showing that slot number two is not used and M.2 underscore two is not used. If we go to the second scenario for that first slot, it comes by eight. And the second slot, which is a by four slot by four underscore two, also becomes by eight. But to reiterate and drive home that point, the M.2 underscore two is not used, not available. And it also shows in all three of the modes, M.2 underscore one is always available. So that's a dedicated resource. Now, in the third scenario, one, two, three, the primary slot, which becomes about eight underscore one, is about eight slot. However, if we use the other two resources, which is slot number two, which is actually by four underscore two, it becomes about four slot when you use M.2 underscore two. And that is kind of the conundrum. And one more piece of information we need to look at is bandwidth, which happens to be on 78. I had to do some digging for this one. And right here, M.2 underscore two PCI Express bandwidth configuration. This is kind of backwards, the way this should be arranged. And this was a little bit odd and, and difficult to find, but we're gonna go through this and explain this because there is some bifurcation here. And what is bifurcation? Okay, as we look at one of the quad cards, uh, the requirements for a quad card are two things. One, you have to have a 16 lane slot. You don't have. You do have, but then where does the GPU go? And you've got a 1080. You want to put it on the first slot. And the second slot is either a four lane slot or an eight lane slot. So the most you can get out of that, how many drives, how many M.2 NVMe drives can we put on a quad card? Four. And how does that work? Okay, mechanically and electrically, we require a 16 lane slot. And each M.2 NVMe drive requires four lanes, hence full bifurcation, four by four by four by four. If we get partial bifurcation, and bifurcation means to split or to fork, then we don't get all four drives, just nature of the beast. Remember going back to the original, how many lanes do we have with the CPU? There's 24. Four are the connection of the chipset to the CPU. That leaves 20. 16 lanes for the GPU and that leaves four lanes for the M.2. M.2 underscore one primary is four lanes dedicated, that one's set. However, those other 16 lanes, those can be reallocated to one GPU or two slots where you have 16 lanes that goes then from eight to eight, or if you wanna use those two slots to the CPU plus M.2 underscore two, then you have an eight lane slot, a four lane slot, and then an M.2 underscore two to make all those resources work. Now what you're gonna gain with a quad card, let's look at this. Okay, to reiterate, M.2 underscore two, and this is on page 78, PCI Express bandwidth configuration. Auto mode, auto detects the M.2 underscore two slot. If an M.2 device is detected, PCI Express by 16 underscore one, and PCI Express by eight underscore two, will run at by eight mode electrically and by four mode electrically respectively. The second option, disabled by eight mode. Disable the M.2 underscore two for PCI Express by 16 underscore one and PCI Express by eight underscore two, which is the second slot running on high performance. Then what you'll have, what you'll achieve, what you'll attain is a primary single slot by 16 or both slots running it by eight. 
Option number three for the M.2 underscore two, disabled or four by four mode, and that's bifurcation where we split or fork to separate those PCI Express lanes. So that slot would support two drives, not four, but two. Now, even though that says RAID card, what that actually means, this is ASUS, so that a lot of times is referred to as the hyper card. It's the uh, quad card, which depending on which one you want to use, all four are the same. ASUS, MSI, ASRock, Gigabyte, all those require motherboard bifurcation, and that's what this is. Uh, when we talk about RAID, RAID is a two-step process. One bifurcation, which is what this is, but it's identified as RAID, which is the second step. In other words, for those asking the question, well, can I just have the drives as two separate drives? Yes, because another step in the BIOS separate from this. So w what do you get out of all this? Well, what you're going to gain is one M.2 NVMe drive. But what you have to do is turn off one so you can have two on that card. So you can either use a quad card, which will show you two drives, and this motherboard shows up on the list with the ASUS bifurcation chart. I'll have that link in the description. Don't want to get into it. I think it's a little bit confusing. And what you'll need to do is uh, find this setting in the BIOS to set this up this way. It'll work by default. If there's nothing there, then by default, it'll see what's there. Now, your option. You've got uh, three options. You can install a quad card and see two drives. You're only gaining one. Or you can install something like the Supermicro Dual M.2 NVM adapter. We have a separate video on that. That sees two drives. Based on the way this is configured, I would expect that to be position one and two on that card. But I could be wrong. I don't know that for a fact. And the reason I say that because when you have four drives, you have position one, two, three, and four. If this quad card is seen as position one and two, then that means a dual adapter would work because you'd get one and two. If, however, the configuration for that card has to be one and three, then you can't use a dual adapter. It has to be a quad adapter. But for two drives, you're only gaining one. My point is, I just want to tell you the options, but I don't think it's worth it. Now, your other option is if you are okay with your GPU in an eight-lane slot, and you still want to have four M.2 NVMe drives, we've only talked about cards that are bifurcated by the motherboard. If you leave everything auto and leave that second slot as an eight lane slot, you could have a self bifurcated card. The problem is those cards are about the price of the motherboard and the CPU combined. Two options. Because we're dealing with PCI Express 3, a self bifurcated card that would do four drives would probably be the uh, Glowtrend Sky. We have a separate video on that. I'll put a link in the description. Your number two option, which we have a video on, would be the uh, Amphiltech Squid which will take six drives on a PCI Express either by 16 by default or with the additional PCI Express configuration adapter, which they have a patent on, can change that to an eight-lane slot. And it will self-bifurcate, and it's got a PLX that does the uh, lane switching to enable that feature. So those are pretty much your options. I think... Uh, there's no reason in getting any more into that, but I had to explain this with a video because it gets a little complicated. And I like to, for you guys not just to know the short answer, but I like for you to understand what's required. Now, to reiterate, for a quad card, what are the two requirements? Number one, you've got to have a 16-lane slot mechanically and electrically. Number two, you've got to be able to fully bifurcate the slot, not by eight by four by four, but by four by four by four by four because uh, each M.2 drive to be seen requires that. And if your motherboard cannot handle, generically, bifurcation with a 16-lane slot. Now, for those asking, okay, what platform supports that? This platform that is now gone, which is the high-end desktop, it's going to be interesting to see what Intel does with the high-end desktop. But right now, AMD says the Threadripper is going to only be Threadripper Pro. So if you can't get the high-end desktop, in the hierarchical structure where we go desktop, high-end desktop, then workstation, then you got to leap over this and go to a workstation, which is a WRX80, best bang for the buck. Processes are coming out soon. There's going to be a sticker shock. But if you need the resources to not only put in one quad card, but say to put in four quad cards, possibility for a video, I'll just leave it at that. Then um, as we go through some of these scenarios and situations, we'll get into some of that. But I hope this helps. This is Builder By. My name's Gil Boyd. I want to thank you guys for watching. I love my subscribers. We we'll look forward to seeing you next video. We're out.